Welcome back, folks. So today we're going to embark upon uh, another little project. I want to build what's called a fast rise time oscillator. Now, these are pretty handy devices. Um, they can be used to test the bandwidth of a system. As you can see by the schematic here, they're pretty simple devices. There's a lot of physics behind them. Before we get too much into this, though, I've already produced the files for this. And I want to just go over to uh, our partner in this uh, PCB way and order up my boards for the next part of the project, which we'll be building one. This is so easy to do. We're at the quick order page here. So we're just going to go over here, add Gerber files. There's my Gerber file. And it's going to read the file. And this is what our, our board is going to look like. I'll show you that in a minute. That's it. I'm done. Uh, but if you want, I mean, you can go down here and, and make some other changes. Like you, you may want a red board. And I'll tell you up here, like the difference. So if we go back to, let's go back to the green board. Green board, they'll make it within 24 hours. So if you want a different color board, like red or blue or black, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. So it's up to you to decide. Like if you're in a hurry for it, now you probably want to just stick with the green if you're really keen on getting another color and you want to wait the extra couple of days that's fine now some of these other colors here are quite a bit more money um so again if you really need to have a purple board and you're willing to spend an extra 33 dollars then you can go for it but generally speaking i'll just open up the gerber file and i will save to cart and proceed to checkout Pick a payment method and then pick a shipping method. So I, I like ePacket. It's it's pretty quick and I'm cheap, so I <laughs> I'll go with that. So the total for our boards here is fourteen dollars and forty cents. So while we're here, I wanted to show you a little bit more about this website. There's so much here and it's so very, very useful. Go over here to Why Us. It gives you a whole bunch of other places to go in the website. And one of my favorite places to go is the technical support. So down here, you can find all sorts of interesting information. Search for anything here. One of the places I go a lot is the Electronics Terms Glossary. Anytime somebody's talking about something I've never heard of, I just pop over here and you've got everything, everything from A to Z. You know, what's a bode plot, a graph of gain versus frequency. Uh, what's BW, abbreviation for bandwidth, which is what we're working with here. Yeah, this is a fantastic feature that they have and it's almost endless. So if I wanted to find out stuff about dip trace, I just type in dip and it says how to generate Gerber files from dip trace. And this will go through exactly step by step. How do you produce Gerber files from your dip trace program? And you know, the same can, you know, if you've got Eagle, we saw that before, but we can type in Eagle, generate Gerber files in Eagle, and tell you step by step exactly how to do that. So it, they've got some fantastic resources over there. Um, you can spend some time on this website and see what they have. It's just, it's quite amazing. Let's get back to our little project here. What we talk about when we talk about rise time, we're talking about the transition time from 10% to 90% of amplitude of a signal. Got that over here on an oscilloscope. So you can see here this square wave coming in about approximately 10 megahertz. And you can see here from this line to this line up here, there, is for, that's from 10% to 90%. And you can see here, I've got the cursors on there where the signal crosses the 10% line and crosses the 90% line. We can see that the delta X is 3.9 nanoseconds. And indeed, that's more or less what the, the scope itself measures, that is four nanoseconds, 3.987. And that's just because I might have the cursors off a little bit. The scope is going to do a better job of it than me. But that's basically what we're looking at here. We're looking at the definition of rise time is, is from this point here to this point here, and then the transition time it takes. So how does this test bandwidth, you might ask? Well, there's a, a, that's where a lot of physics comes into it. So if we go over here, this at Thor Labs here goes through a long explanation of this. Now, I'll leave this to you guys to go and have a look at the mathematics involved here. It's not terribly complicated, but the explanation of going through of why they go through each step in order to get to where they're going 
is uh, pretty complicated. So there's a lot of physics here. But the net result is the rise time is equal to the frequency at the 3 dB point divided into 0 0.35. Now we could take that just the other way around. So if we put a fast rise time oscillator onto a system and we measure its rise time and divide that into 0 0.35, we'll get the frequency bandwidth. Let's go back over to the here. This is our, our net result here. So we're going to be able to use this device to, to look at the bandwidth of our oscilloscope or our oscilloscope plus a probe or some other precise measurement we're trying to make where we're going to need to know the bandwidth of the system that we're using to make that measurement. And our goal here is, is, to, is to make one of these things that's going to be around about 1.5 nanoseconds or better. The reason for that is most people have oscilloscopes ranging from about 50 megahertz up to about 200 megahertz. A fast rise time oscillator in around the 1.5 nanoseconds or better range is going to be able to be a useful instrument in testing the bandwidth of systems around instruments like that. Let's have a look at, look at our circuit here. So here's the, the actual oscillator itself. This is what's called a relaxation oscillator. It uses a Schmidt trigger inverter as the oscillation piece. So that basically right there is just the oscillator. This here is just a buffer. If we were to just take this oscillator and drive all four of these other inverters, it would put quite a load on the, the oscillator, and that would make the waveform highly asymmetric. This buffer here does help prove the overall squareness of the wave. Now, the frequency of this is, uh, is equal to some constant k divided by r times c. k is very much dependent upon the threshold voltages of the Schmidt trigger. This selection of 5.6k and 20 picofarads is going to give us a frequency up around about 10 megahertz. You know, that's not particularly important. What is important is the fast rise time. And that's where um, the 74AC series chips are really good. They're high power, high speed CMOS devices. Their outputs transition very quickly. A lot of people building these oscillators uh, use techniques where they're getting around about two, na two nanoseconds, two and a half nanoseconds of rise time. I'm going to see if we can push that a little bit and get it going a little bit faster. So this is the, the, the basic uh, schematic here. We've got the oscillator and we've got the output drive section. We've got four of the, the inverters are driving through 620 ohms. And then we have, from that, we have 75 ohms to ground. If we do the math on that, I think the internal resistance of these gates is something like 8 ohms. So we pick 628... And we take the reciprocal of that, multiply that by four. And then we add to that the reciprocal of 75. 75 equals that. And then we take the reciprocal of that. We end up with uh, 50.75, around 51 ohms, which is close enough to 50 ohms for our purposes here. So we can test entire systems, including uh, coaxial cables and things like that in the 50 ohm range. Now let's pop over here and have a look at the layout that I just sent up there to PCB Way. I think it's a very clever little design. Pat myself on the back here. So what I've done here, here's going to be the output. So you see the circle here. That's going to be the BNC connector. The BNC connector is going to be on the bottom of the board facing away from us. So I've tapered the board out a little bit here so it's easy to grasp with your finger so you can put it onto a device like an oscilloscope or a cable or a connector of some kind. Here's the chip that's going to do all the hard work for us. We're going to have a USB micro power input. Um, here's the capacitor for the oscillator. These here are just bypass capacitors, and that's a, a, a bulk capacitor. Now, one of the things I've done here to try and improve the performance over what I've seen other people do is I've laid out all the traces on the back so that I can have on the front here a complete ground plane. Now, that does two things for us. So it acts like a ground plane in the, in the classic sense, and it makes a very, very low impedance for the distribution of the power. If you look at the bottom, I've kept the traces as big and thick as possible to reduce impedance, especially this output trace. And I've also kept it as short as possible. The main gain here is from that huge width of it. So this is a very, very, very low impedance, especially on, on the inductance side. Right there is the first inverter is the oscillator. The second inverter over here is the buffer. And then that comes out and just distributed out amongst the other four. 
then their outputs are fed directly into this huge rail that goes to the output here. And then on the top, there's that 75 ohm resistor here to give us our overall 50 ohm output, or 51 in our case. So that's it. So all we have to do now is wait for the uh, boards to come in from PCB way. We'll build up one of these and test it out. And I'll show you what I mean by some of the things that we discussed today about uh, using a fast rise time oscillator in characterizing the bandwidth of, of a system. That's all folks. Uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you uh, Tuesday with another episode of our AM FM radio kit build. Bye bye folks. See you later.